Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step what I do when I go fish a new body of water. Well folks, recently I went up to Kerr Lake uh, on the North Carolina Virginia line to fish a catfish tournament, the Ice Bowl. And uh, it's the first time I've ever fished that body of water from my boat. So I said, you know what, this is a great time to show people what I go through when I go to a new body of water. I had two days to pre-fish, a little short amount of time to get out on the water and figure out what was going on with the fish. Now, the first thing I do whenever I hear that I'm going to a new body of water, thinking about going to it, I get on my Navionics app and I look at that lake and look at the maps of what the undersurface of that lake looks like. Now, I'm not sponsored by Navionics, but I think it's one of the greatest tools that a fisherman can have. It is a game changer in the fishing world. The ability to pull up a lake and look at very accurate mapping data for what the bottom of that lake looks like is a game changer and it has really helped countless fishermen figure out where fish are. Now I knew that I was putting in around Clarksville, Virginia and I didn't want to run for an hour to get someplace to fish. So what I was trying to do was find some areas fairly close to where I was putting in at and what stood out to me was a bend in the old river channel in the upper middle part of the lake and uh, right around that bend uh, were some creek arms there were a lot of points and this was the area that i decided to start out fishing in well the thing that stood out about this area was there were several creek arms that came in within a relatively short distance and there was some steep structure i could tell by the topographic lines on there that there was some steep structure on the old river channel around those ledges, around those points. And these are generally areas that are gonna hold some fish, especially in what I'd call a little slower bite condition. So we headed down there and I decided to run into the back of a creek and work my way out. All right guys, Kerr Lake, Bugs Island, whatever you wanna call it, uh, a couple of days before the ice bowl tournament up here at the end of January. And uh, it's almost living up to its reputation, about 32 degrees today. Water's chilly. It's in the 40s, 45 where we're at. We're in the back of a creek. I would honestly tell you the creek we're in, but I don't know the name of it. I uh, don't know a lot about this lake. Figuring it out. Got Matt Miles on the boat with me. We're doing a little pre-fishing. Trying to figure out what's going on with some fish. Anytime, Matt. Of course, you said you were a nervous uh, angler. Just a little bit. We got get excited. He got excited because we seen a really big arch on the screen, and yeah, a minute later, boom, Rod goes. It was a solid takedown. So yeah, he's not that big, but he was hungry. He's okay. committed. We'll take We've been out here ten minutes on this spot. Oh, we gonna need a trolling motor drop because if we hook into a big fish, he's gonna pull us all over. Maybe in that line, I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah. that. Oh my goodness. That's a little one. He's excited at least. He's an excited fish. And there's probably one on that planer board unless that's the same fish and he's swimming in that line. That's possible. Yeah, you got one. Got a skunk out of the boat. That's the most important thing. You walk back, I'll grab him. Hey, fish. Lift it. There you go. Boom. Oh man, that circle hook did the trick. I'm not going to win the tournament, but he proves our thesis that you can catch fish this way. Uh -uh, don't you do it. <laughs> he thought about it. Now, we weren't catching any super big tournament winning fish, but we thought we had one on. It just turned out to be the wrong fish. If you're wondering, folks, that's a oh my god, that's a crappie rod, oh. crappy rod. What is that? One of them B&M spider rigging rods yeah, or something? It's a B&M trolling rod. It's uh... dang son. Yeah, he's oh man, he's gonna break. He's... Don't oh, just take your time. We got to get him in just to get him. Turn that trolling motor on. I got it barely moving just to keep the boat straight. We're gonna see what Matt's angling skills are here. Come on. He does not want to come up. Oh, come on, buddy. I just don't want to break my rod. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a striper. It's a great video when you break a rod. Get that rod back. <laughs> 
thing. <laughs> Stropping bass. Look at that. On a B&M trolling rod. Check that yeah. out. We ain't even trying to catch them. Hit a little Bucks bit of crappie jig. There you go. Someone told me you can use these as bait. I don't know. Now we fished this area a pretty good while, and we decided to go to another creek into the back of it and see what we could put in the boat in that area. It'll at least be our biggest one today if we get it to the boat. Yeah. You reeling this crappie rod? Yeah. Let me get this out of the way here. Dun, 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 dun. Good fish. He doesn't even quite realize he's hooked yet, I don't think. Think he's in there? Yeah. Matt making a call. No, I bogey grip anything under 70. <laughs> <laughs> I like to hand grab him. Yeah. Just grab him by the by the yes, lip. He's about to see the boat here in just a minute. We'll find out just what he's got then. Eh, he ain't huge, but... We at least need a teener, man. Yeah, he's a teener. at least make us... He's double digits. Solid takedown. It was, a good, it was a good blue bite. That was nice. Look at that. 13 pounds. Car Lake Blue Cat. Just dragging baits here. Hadn't had much luck in this uh, this cove, but it's funny that we come back here, hardly catch any fish. And then poof, all of a sudden, our biggest fish of the day. Well, again, we're catching fish, similar uh, areas on the lake, uh, similar conditions, similar bottom structure. Uh, so I decided to shift gears. I went back to that map, looked at it, and found an area around that big river bend. Looked like a steep ledge. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go anchor up on this. We've been dragging baits drifting. I'm going to try something a little different. Let's see if these baits not moving helps or hurts the bite. I'm gonna go to this side. Uh, you net? Uh, I think so. I, th I don't know. I, he don't, I don't know that he knows he's hooked yet. He's acting I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. Very lethargic fish. Yeah, you saw us pull that fish. Whoop! I'm glad you didn't do it. Yeah, they just saw us snatch it in. What'd you catch? Nice fish. Biggest fish of the day. 
somebody else on camera here. You want to eat him? <laughs> Good Jeez, job. I told you he was on there. <laughs> okay, he, he's not going to tell you what happened. He picked the rod up, said it ain't on there, put the rod back down. I couldn't stand it. I thought it was on there. A little perch head, little Eva foam, isn't that what you said it was? EVA. EVA. <laughs> I call it Eva foam. How'd you like the. Dude, I love these them right. The, the, the biggest thing I like about them is the way I reel fish in. This is my position. And if the butt on this thing is too short, it's not a big deal. You just crunch it up further. But with this, I just like the way they sit in my arm. So. Well, bang, we put a good fish in the boat. That was a decent fish. Sun was setting. Our first day was done. So we decided to head back on in the camp. If you sit and look what I've done here, folks, uh, I've looked at the mapping software. I found areas with structure in the main part of the lake, and I fished that from shallow to deep. I've tried drifting, I've tried anchoring, and in all places, it produced fish. Now we had kind of something to go with, something that was working, uh, that basically fish were everywhere. It was just a matter of narrowing down what fish uh, we needed for tournament day. Went up the river to start, anchored up. Uh, it's foggy, a lot of fog. We had to, uh, there's a slow roll up here. But we got to our secret spot and there were six boats anchored on it. So uh, we're right near it. <laughs> there's a lot of boats. Uh, I don't know how many we rode past coming up here. We were in the fog. We only got to see them when we were about 50 yards from them. Matt's getting ready to catch fish. Did you look, did you mess up? mess up or is he running he's running off isn't he or a small okay so there you may see the first fish of the day being caught we can't stage this stuff we got to put it into live well no matter how big it is it's just bad luck if you don't i probably should oh god it's little i shouldn't have every fish Darn channel cat. Hey, Scott's out of the boat. Pretty, you know what? There's our fish. There, there's our fish right there. That's pretty bad. What's interesting is, came on pinky with that pink cork. Congratulations, you got the first fish in the boat. Thank you. Open up, dude. I'm trying to help you out here, whether you realize it or not. Well, sadly for us, tournament day did not produce anywhere near the number of fish that we were catching pre-fishing. We were catching anywhere from 12 to 15 fish a day pre-fishing. And on tournament day, I think we got about eight or nine and most of them were channel cats. But a lot shifted overnight. Uh, we had a uh, rain front come through, dumped about an inch and a half of rain. Wind shifted around 180 degrees from where we were fishing, uh, from where we were fishing the previous days. And uh, that seemed to change the game. Uh, it seemed to change what was going on with the fish bite. And we heard that from a lot of people. But as it is in any tournament, somebody's always going to find a fish. And congratulations to the winners who found a 58 pounder uh, to win the tournament. On this lake, that's kind of on the low side, uh, 80, 90 and even a 141 pound fish won this tournament. That to this date is the largest catfish that's ever been weighed in in a catfish tournament. Uh, and it came out of that lake along with the world record. One thing I forgot to tell you about this lake is it is home to the current world record blue catfish. And uh, they're not behind every tree, not behind every stump, but big fish are in there. And uh, this was my first attempt at fishing the lake, and uh, you can bet your money I'll be going back. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, and here are a couple of more videos that I think you're going to like.